Hello and welcome. My name's Ryan. I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Um, in the last video, we we started to create our login and register functions on the server, and we also I can't remember if we created them on the client as well. We may have done that in the video before the last video. Either way, we have been working on our login and registration process for our game. Uh, we ended the last video with an error on the C dot enter room function. Now. The enter room function is what we use to place the client into the maps client list so that the map is able to um, keep track of who is currently on the, the map in question. So let's fix up this error by first implementing a stub function for this enter room function. So open up client.js. We are going to add another function to that called enter room. I'm going to move down to the bottom. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'll put the data handlers at the bottom, the socket stuff. Add a comment socket stuff. I will put a comment initialization. Oh, I can never spell initialize. Initialization. And I'll add another comment called client uh, methods. I have to put a capital M on that because I did with the other one. I'm going to add this dot enter room and it's going to be equal to a function which takes the selected room as a parameter. Uh, what we'll now do is we will first uh, notify all of the other clients in the room that we have entered the room and then we will add ourselves into the room. So we're going to say maps selected room dot clients since it stores a list of clients. If we just go back to our game data maps folder hometown, you'll see it has a list of client. Oh, that should be called clients because it's plural. There's multiples. So I'm going to change those to say clients. There we go. That was in our maps, by the way. So exports clients, not client. There was a spelling mistake there. Uh, so back in client.js. So for each client, so we'll just do a for each. We're going to pass a function to deal with each client. I'm going to say other client because it's not you. And for every client in the room, we want to tell them that this client has entered the room. So other client dot socket dot write. We're going to call packet.build and we're going to pass in the params to say that we have entered. So I'm going to pass in enter and we will put the username, the room and the X and Y position. So actually we don't need to put the room because we already know the room. So we're going to say enter. It's going to be the next parameter is going to be other client. No, it's going to be client. Yes, because it's the client that we're that we are, we're entering the other person's room. So client.username, client dot sorry, client dot user dot username, client dot user dot pos underscore x, and finally client dot user dot pos underscore y. So that is our notification to all other clients on the room that we have entered the room. And finally we need to put ourselves into that room so that we now exist in the room simply by saying maps selected underscore room dot clients dot push and we're going to inject ourselves into that room. So the next time someone enters this room, we will exist in the clients array and we'll be notified of their entrance to the room so that we can be displayed on their screen. I'm going to save this file. And now we're going to jump back into Game Maker so that we can handle those packets that we're sending back from the packet.js function and those packets were login and register. So back in Game Maker, I am going to open up my uh, handle packet function. And the packets that we're interested in implementing this time are going to be login and register. So case login and we're going to add a break so that we have an end to that. And we're going to add one more case register. And I'm going to add a break statement to that as well. So now we have two functions to, to implement. So for the, we'll do the register packet first. For the register packet, we will read the status out. So the status was whether or not it succeeded or failed. So we're just going to say status equals buffer underscore read argument zero, because that is the, the buffer that's been passed into this function, sorry, into this script. It's going to be of type buffer underscore string. There we go. Now we can simply do something like an if statement to say if status equals equals true because we passed back a string saying true. Um, we could pass back a 
um, a bool value, but uh, I haven't tested that with our packet build function yet. So if you want, that's a good test for you guys to do. It'll make you a bit more familiar with the packet system to see whether or not it can handle Boolean values. So if the registration was true, I'm just going to show a message to say, uh, register success. I think it says spell success. Please log in, full stop. So we're gonna tell them that their registration was successful and now they need to log into the server. Otherwise, we will show a message that says, register failed, username taken. Because that's most likely gonna be the reason why it fails. Since the username is unique, um, Mongoose will automatically not allow the same username to be taken in the database. And that is essentially our register function completed. The more complicated one will be login. However, we will give this a quick test and see how it works right now. So I'm just gonna start my game. And we have a couple of errors that we need to clean up. Uh, what were they? Unknown symbol semicolon. Oh, okay, I think I've put the wrong symbols in. There's no semicolon there, so that's the problem. Now let's run our game again and have a look at what happens. There we go. So I was just going to say connecting. Obviously our server is not running, so I will quickly start up the server. There we go. Uh, if I hit debug test so that the server is running on our test environment and then we can run our client now. Right, so our client has passed the connection phase. We can now attempt to register an account. I'm just gonna register A and B. If I register A, it will say register successful, please log in. If I try to register this account again, it will say register failed, username taken. And that's because on our server side, it has automatically realized that that username exists in the database. There cannot be two of this username. So our register functions are completed. Now let's work on our login functions. This one is slightly more complicated because we need to actually instantiate a instance of our player. We also need another map for our player to go to. So in our server side of our application, we have defined that we have a map called hometown uh, that exists in game maker as rm underscore map underscore home. So in game maker, I'm going to replicate that simply by creating a group of maps called, uh, sorry, a group of rooms, and I'm gonna call this maps. And in our maps group, I'm going to create a room that will be called rm underscore map underscore home. If that was what we named it in our server, map home, which it was. So this is just gonna be the map that we use for our players to exist on. And I'm not gonna add anything to it just yet. I will add a tile from our backgrounds. I haven't added background tiles yet. Um, what I'll do then just to, just to so that we know that we've entered this room is I'll make the background color red. Oh, that's horrible. I won't make it that red. That's better. That's not really much better. I will make it brown. Oh God, these colors are horrible. You know what? Define a custom color and make it not look like crap. There you go. Um, so now we have a map for our player to enter. We can begin working on our login code. So the status is the same. So it the first thing that comes back is whether or not it was successful or false and the conditional statement is the same so i'm just going to copy paste those in the only difference now is that i'm not going to show messages unless the login was failed so i'm going to say over here login failed most likely uh user doesn't exist exist or password incorrect however if the login was successful we need to start doing some stuff. So the server sent us back a, a bit of information, some additional information to help us figure out where the client needs to go. Now, that information was login, the status of the login, so whether it was successful or failed, um, the room that the user is going to, their positional data, and that user's name. So in that order, we need to read that information. Target underscore room, which is the room that we're going to be trying to get to, equals buffer underscore read argument zero and is going to be a string. Now the next two pieces of information are slightly different, but I will just copy paste this three times so that we have three instances. 
I'm going to change this from target room to target X because this is going to be the position that we're trying to get to and target Y which is the other position which is the Y coordinate that we're trying to get to and they're going to be types of buffer underscore U16 so that's just an unsigned 16-bit integer buffer underscore u16 the reason we're using u16s is just so that we have a large range of values to work with and also if we go back to our server side of the project and have a look at our packet.build function you will notice that for any type of number we pass across we are writing an unsigned 16-bit integer now since our positional data is going to be um, x and y coordinates which are numbers they will come through our build function into our number um, buffer generator and they will be written into the buffer as unsigned 16-bit integers so on our game maker side of things we need to de we need to unwrap our buffer using unsigned 16-bit integers uh, finally we need to find out what the room is that we're actually going to go to so if I changed my um, sorry not if I changed we need to we need to actually figure out what the room is so I'm going to say go to underscore room this is going to store a reference to the room that we're going to try and go to. It's going to be equal to asset underscore get underscore index. Now asset get index takes the string representation of an asset in GameMaker, for instance, rm map underscore home, and it returns you the ID of that actual uh, asset. So if we pass into that target underscore room, we will now have a reference to the room that our server wants us to actually go to. From here, I should be able to say that the player name, actually, you know what, we'll do this one line above. We will extract the player's name. We'll just say name equals buffer read and we'll use buffer string for this. And then we'll say go to room asset get index. So below asset get uh, index or go to room we we'll say room underscore go to this is the function to actually move us into a room and we're going to tell it to go to we're going to tell it to room go to the go to room which is the room that we want to actually go to um, for now that's all we're going to do but we will add a comment in here saying initiate a player object on this room and I'm going to save my changes and save my game maker project and we will give that a quick run and see what happens okay so our server is running the game maker project has started up I'm going to log in with the a and a user that we created and you'll see we've been taken to RM map home which you'll recognize by the purple color so this is the first map in our game um, just to demonstrate how this is working I'm going to create another map and I'm going to call this I don't know rm underscore map underscore test and we'll give it a different background color uh, we'll give this one a reddish orange background color oh, that looks more like pink but that'll do so that was rm underscore map underscore test now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our database to simulate the fact that my character AA has moved into a different room so for instance I have walked around on our game I've hit a warp tile which is taking me to RM map test and the database has updated my position from RM map home to RM map test now if I save the object into the database you'll notice that A uh, has got Sprite Hero but he's looking at RM map test now the next time A logs in or the next time that we deal with the warp packet which we'll probably add later at some point um, if I log in with A, you'll see that we go to we go nowhere because there's probably an error on the server. So let's have a look what's happened. Uh, there's an error on the server. What's happened here? Cannot read property clients of undefined. Ah, of course, because that room doesn't actually exist in our server. So what we would need to do is uh, we'd need to create a room to handle the room that we've got in our client side. So I'm going to duplicate this simply by copying and pasting that uh, I can't remember what I called it rm underscore map underscore test was it I think it was and I'm just going to call this the room in here rm underscore map underscore test because we need to have a map that represents our map on our server otherwise our server doesn't know about the map and it crashes uh, you can deal with the errors another time so I'm just going to call it a test map a test map there we go save that restart the server and our map has automatically been loaded into our game back in game maker if I start that up again 
hopefully when I log in with AA, the server now knows about the, the pink room and takes us to the pink room. So that's just a brief demonstration of how we get our maps working. Obviously, we don't do it like that, like the way I just demonstrated it. We have the game change the database entry, and we also have the game update the player's position into a new map and things like that. However, that's just a brief demonstration to let you guys know sort of what's coming and how we're going to be doing it and things like that. So thank you for watching. Um, please like the video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave any comments you have in the section below. In the next video, we'll probably be dealing with actually creating our player character and dealing with their movement packets on the server side, as well as saving that movement information into the database. Um, so yeah, don't forget to like the video. Bye guys.